You could have at least texted me. Watch out, they don't text. You want burgers? I don't. Some chicken. It ribs. You know, we, we do these movies so often and there always comes along one where I'm like, I should really invest in a machete. No. You know, I, I mean, hear me out. Hear mm-hmm. me out. No. A machete is a very good tool. Obviously. For you, what? Well, home defense, first of all. <laughs> and if the government comes and takes away our guns, what are you going to have? Machetes. Uh, mm. <laughs> I strongly disagree with everything you're saying. <laughs> oh, okay. not if even you could use the mach- okay. if you if you can give me three good reasons other than home defense, okay, as to why you need a machete and how often you're going to use it, okay, then we'll think about it. All right, uh, pest control. What pest control? That's right. How? Um, well, you know, if a raccoon invades our living area. Have we ever had a raccoon in this area? Not yet. Well, not yet. Not yet. Okay, number two. But when the raccoons attack. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Uh, number two. Um, you know, when you when you can't untie something, you know, it's really hard to untie. If you had a machete, knives you for could that. You cut it. No, a machete. You could put some weight behind it. You see, cut right through in two seconds. And two seconds flat. With a knife, you got to sit there and saw a little bit. Okay, struggle. scissors. A machete. Um, <laughs> two machetes, in fact. You could put two machetes together and uh, do a little clipping motion, and there you go. Okay, number three. Number three. Uh, shaving. <laughs> what? Mm, my balls. <laughs> Are you really going to shave your balls with a machete? Oh, God, no. Okay. <laughs> so the answer is ding, ding, ding. No. no. Send your machetes care of you know, the it, You know, one of your three things should have been cutting down part of the trees in the backyard that need to be cut down. Well, there you go. See, see, okay. But see, that's only machete. one thing. Machete, but uh, that would help. A machete. Um, if you want a fun Lee's machete... <laughs> No machete fun. You can uh, subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash N O T H P. That's patreon.com slash N O E N O T H P. I hate you. Anyway, welcome to night of the horror file. I hate you. I know you do. I'm getting a divorce. I know, but welcome to night of the horror file, a podcast where I take a horror movie and show my wife, Brittany, and hopefully she enjoys it this week though. We're going outside the, the, the horror, the horror (laughs) element way outside. In fact, we're taking a trip to the grind (laughs) house. And we'll talk about what that is uh, when we get into the episode. But what did we watch this week? Let me guess. It was Machete. Oh, did we watch Machete? <laughs> That's right. 2010's Machete. So when Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez teamed up in 2007 to bring us Grindhouse, an awesome double feature, they included some fake movie trailers in between the two features to create the proper Grindhouse double experience. One of these trailers was Machete. <laughs> Now, the character of Machete technically already existed in Spy Kids. Um, in fact, Danny Trejo portrayed that Machete as well. So, <laughs> Oh, okay. Which begs the question, is it the same Machete? Now, uh, Danny Trejo has said it's a multiple universe thing, so do with that what you will. Um, this Machete, however, <laughs> continues that B-movie grindhouse fun using a lot of the same footage the trailer had, in fact. Now, in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, The Origin of Machete goes as far back as Desperado in 93 when he cast Danny Trejo as an assassin in that movie. Rodriguez wrote Machete after he was inspired by reading stories about when the FBI and the CIA don't want their agents in danger, they will hire agents from Mexico for $25,000. And he said, that's Machete. (laughs) Okay. okay. Machete would be that agent. Now, uh, Rodriguez put it on the back burner, though, until... 
the trailer hit with the Grindhouse double. Uh, Danny Trejo himself kept talking to Rodriguez about a standalone machete movie. And finally, in 2010, Trejo got his wish. And in fact, surprisingly, got to play his first lead role in a film. After all these years of side characters. <laughs> so let's get right to it because there's a lot of badass to fit into our episode on 2010's Machete. So picture it. We're in Mexico. You know. And I'm drinking tequila without you <laughs> because you're not in Mexico. <laughs> we really should have gotten some tequila up in here and shit. Mm, no. Um, oh, that's true. Tequila. No. Tequila and us does not mix. I mean, it does, but we either drink too much and we cry. <laughs> that's true. Or we don't drink enough and don't get drunk. Uh, there's no... <laughs> there's no in between. There's not. <laughs> <laughs> Lee just cries about his feelings for an hour and a half <laughs> so, until he passes out. But you know, Rodriguez announced this was going to be a full-length feature, but released as a bonus on the Planet Terror home release. But obviously, since... I saw this on opening night. <laughs> it got its own theatrical release, which is kind of surprising. I mean, you had a fake trailer and now you have a movie from <laughs> from just I mean, a fucking joke. That's that's the funniest part is <laughs> this spawned from a joke trailer. I think that's cool, though. Yeah. Uh, what uh, actually another trailer, uh, Hobo with a Shotgun. Uh, went on to have its own feature as well. Oh, that's uh, cool. It's right there on the on the movie show. <laughs> I don't believe you. Why do I own all these things? <laughs> somebody <laughs> somebody explain this to me. Uh, but what kind of shocked everyone, though, was the cast announcement, which we will get into as we go. But it's a big ma mixed bag of random randomness until you see how well they work together, which is actually very surprising. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's so much. There's so many like actors in this that you're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hang on now. I did not see Quentin Tarantino, though. Oh, uh, no, he's not in this. Sad day. Yeah. So picture it. Mexico. I'm picturing You're it. not there. Damn it. <laughs> Machete and his partner are driving to go rescue a kidnapped girl. The partner is scared, but Machete says no one's going to rescue her if they don't. Right. Someone comes on the radio and tells him to back down or wait for backup, and Machete is a badass and just breaks the radio because he's like, no, we're fucking doing this. <laughs> yeah, he crushes this radio with his bare hands. Uh, so they really go... What? <laughs> you said that like he's got like these huge hands and this radio was like big and he's like... Uh, I, his bare hands. <laughs> I mean, I might be able to crush this radio. Machete. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, so I really should be a grindhouse announcer. So anyway, <laughs> so they really go all out with this opening here. You have the old film scratches which go away so it's not you know, annoying through the whole thing. Uh, but I love it. I, I love the look of how it, they made it into a grainy film and stuff like that. Uh, so we immediately start with our hero played, played by the ever badass Danny Trejo. So it's kind of amazing how Danny has been in movies since the eighties, but never played a lead. And honestly, he shines pretty bright in this one. Uh, what movies have you seen with uh, Danny Trejo in it? From Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> Uh, don't know. I know, that's a terrible question to ask you. <laughs> that's a terrible question. I don't know. It's like asking you what your favorite horror movie is. What um, movies have he been in? Uh, what has he not been in? Like everyone in- Sound fact, of Music? I don't know. <laughs> Danny Trejo might have been in the background. <laughs> Uh, that's the thing. Danny Trejo might be in some of those movies. We don't know because he is in like so many goddamn movies. Uh, in fact, he has 394 movies. Holy shit. <laughs> that's how many movies Danny Trejo's appeared in. So he he may be in The Sound of Music. So I've seen two of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Machete and... And from, from Dust Till Dawn. Dawn, which, I mean, this is definitely not going to be the last we see of Danny Trejo on the <laughs> show. <laughs> like I said, the, almost everybody in this cast has worked with Danny in one form or another. Well, well I mean, he's been in a lot of movies. I so. do 300, yeah, and counting. <laughs> um, he's still doing movies. So they pull up to an old abandoned building. There are guys out front with guns. So Machete floors it and rams the car into the building. This kills his partner. Which, by the way, they're shooting at the car and like bullets are f like pelting his partner in the next seat, but not touching. <laughs> no, not him. <laughs> not, he's bulletproof. Yeah, not touching. Well, machete. kind of. 
<laughs> so he goes in and just starts killing everyone while he's looking for this girl. He finds her. She's naked. He grabs her to get her out of there. But she ends up stabbing him with his own machete in the leg. Yeah. And pulling a phone out of her vag. To, uh, she calls somebody and she says, I got him. I got I got to ask this. <laughs> no. The answer is no. <laughs> Can you get a whole phone up in there? I don't want to try. I yeah. I mean, I've seen some wine bottle videos, but I I was just assuming like a phone would like get kind of stuck. You know, like I feel like I don't know the mechanics of it. Just, I've never tried to shove. A maybe phone there was in my a vagina. string on it. You know, like and she just pulled it like a rip cord. And just... Did you see a string? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> I don't think she, I don't think she really had I mean, a phone in her I guess vagina. if people in jail could sneak them into their assholes, I, I, I assume like you could. I, anyway, moving on. Let's I not. don't think they sh- do that. I don't think they shove them in their assholes. I think so. I don't think they shove phones. In, in their fact, assholes. I think the term is keystering. I think you and keister something into jail. <laughs> drugs, but not <laughs> cell phones. Well, I don't know. Immediately though, you you get. <laughs> You you see that this shit is like way over the fucking top. Oh yeah. I mean, as oh, soon yeah. as he goes in there, he does like a a fucking three sixty spin with his machete and chops everyone's head off. And I like that in a movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because so you're like you're immediately on board because you're like, oh fuck, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, we are getting torrents of blood in this one. This is gonna be good. <laughs> um, so uh, how were you digging the grindhouse nature so far of this one? You could tell me. Grindhouse all day long still doesn't make sense. To okay, me. well, hang on, I got something for you. So, so we talked a bit about the grindhouse style in our last episode uh, from Dust Till Dawn, uh, but what exactly is a grindhouse movie, or what, what constitutes a grindhouse movie? Well, for starters, a grindhouse was a theater that mainly showed low budget horror, splatter, or exploitation films. Uh, these theaters followed a sort of a grind policy, if you want to call it that, uh, something that dated back to the early 1920s. In fact. Uh, they would continuously show films at a slashed price that gradually rose over the course of a day, which was much different from your normal theaters that had fewer show times and priced according to seats, sections, and in fact even location of theaters. You know, uh, we, we see that today with studio the, the big studio theaters. Are, right, you mostly get charged for. Well, mostly now it's one flat price. According to who you are, <laughs> like what? What do you mean? Well, you know, you got the student pricing. You oh got, yeah, 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 yeah. You got leveled pricing, but it's all usually just one price, right? Um, unless, and the sad part is, there's no value theaters much anymore. <laughs> oh yeah. So like, I think we had one left, and it's probably about to shutter its doors because of COVID. Oh, are you talking about the Eaton? Yeah, the Eaton Square. Yeah, I don't. Uh, they're probably going to go under. Yeah, because they, they were the last value theater. And even then, it was, what, like a couple bucks less? It was, yeah, it was like four fifty versus eight fifty, yeah. which is $4 less. But I loved the dollar theater. Oh, yeah, yeah. The dollar theaters are something that have gone extinct. Yeah. And uh, honestly, that was the last value theater that you had. And mm. it, it might have been considered a grindhouse theater back in the day. Like, depending on what it showed, but they would show uh, second run movies. Now, that's called yes. a second run house. Yes. So, um, not a grind house, but, you know, a second run movie theater is okay. what that would be generally called. I see. But, um, but a grind house, uh, <laughs> it had, uh, like, they were usually independently owned, first of all. So uh, as opposed to studio owned theaters, okay. which when I say studio owned theaters, that's uh, your AMCs, you know, yeah. uh, your like uh, Cinemarks and stuff like that. Um, I'm picking up what you're putting yeah, down. Yeah, you I get, got you. You get it. Uh, but like, um, oh, sorry. Now, now, of course, because the audience were of a lower class, you know, lower class working stiffs could afford these places. Uh, they were labeled as disreputable you know, theaters and stuff like that. Places uh, you didn't want to get caught in. Oh, right, right. Like the dirty theaters and stuff like that. When really those were more of the porn theaters. Okay, <laughs> I got Those, you. those yeah. were more the places you probably didn't want to get caught walking into. Uh, your grindhouse is sure there was probably somebody getting a blowjob next year or something like that. <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, it was just a rowdy crowd, you know. Right. And of course you probably had your drug addicts and shit in there and people paying the price just to escape the cold, but like 
Okay. But you could have that in a regular theater. Right. I, I mean, I, I fucking watched, what was it? What the hell did I go see? I saw like a big blockbuster one time and this dude was getting a sloppy blowjob next to me. But did Lee move? No, he wanted to see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat through that awkwardness, ignoring it. <laughs> but, um, uh, but you know, uh, the, the films those places showed back in the day are now hailed as fucking masterpieces by like the horror crowd and stuff like that. Uh, just as an example, I spit on your grave. Blackula, I Drink Your Blood, Dolomite, Night of the Living Dead, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Last House on the Left, They Call Her One-Eye, Five Fingers of Death, and hell, even Halloween was played at a grindhouse back in the day. <laughs> so yeah, they, they weren't the mainstream places, but these places churned out some of my all-time favorite movies. So yes, grindhouse films are, are, were important, and I, I think they still are. Now with television... Uh, became you know, like when it started becoming insanely more popular and midnight movies being a thing, uh, Grindhouse is slowly kind of phased out, you know, plus your larger studios, your studio right. started moving those places out. And right. Stuff, you know. OK, so that still does not define on. <laughs> what a Grindhouse movie is. So that is a, a place. Right, right, right. A Grindhouse is a place. But a gr the word grindhouse is used nowadays to ex – it's a catch-all term for these exploitation films like Machete or like I Spit on Your Grave. Think of I Spit on what Your Grave. What does exploitation mean? Exploitation, and we'll kind of discuss that as we go through this movie. I'll kind of explain more of it. <laughs> but an exploitation movie is – well, okay, let me use an example. Uh, Welcome Home, Brother Charles. That's a black exploitation movie. And exploitation, black exploitation, you know, it's all the same word. This is technically considered mech exploitation <laughs> if you want to get to it. But an exploitation movie is a movie that usually takes one subject and exploits it, like sex, violence, um, movies with over the top gore that are just plain silly, like right. blood sucking freaks. That's an exploitation Like movies movie. that you couldn't play in a studio. Right. And they were typically lower budget. Got Low you. Low budget, unknown filmmakers at the time, you know, like George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Like not an exploitation movie, but it's still, you would still consider that almost a grindhouse movie. Okay. I understand. These movies that you can't show in a studio theater, mm -hmm. but you could show in these grindhouses. Yes. Because of because they exploited certain elements, right? Like sex, right? You know, like I spit on your grave. Perfect example, right? Like you wouldn't go to the, <laughs> the <laughs> they would never even to today would never show I spit on your grave at an AMC theater, <laughs> right? So these movies are like it's it's almost the, rated like not rated movies. Oh yeah, you could release an unrated movie in a grindhouse. That's what I mean. These are yeah. almost like unrated movies right and i'm not i'm by no means an expert in this kind of field right uh but like the thing is like um yeah most of the movies that they showed in these grindhouses were easy to obtain you know people wanted to get their movie seen well you'd probably go to the grindhouses or the drive-ins i see yeah and stuff like that that's how you get those kind of movies seen because like no big theater is gonna <laughs> carry you know um no hoity-toity theater is gonna carry uh i Bit on your grave or fucking uh i drink your blood <laughs> or <laughs> right. anything like that now halloween did kind of cross over there were those movies that exploded and right made it to the big top right but like but yeah that's what an exploitation movie is and my example of welcome home brother charles is take that movie they exploit the stereotype of the black man with the giant penis oh. they exploit that Okay. subject because that's his weapon in that movie that's oh what he God. kills people with oh my God. um one of these days no <laughs> you don't want to do no. welcome brother charles we probably never will cover that <laughs> i don't know how two white people would sit there and talk <laughs> about that movie um nobody wants to hear our input on that we could cover blackula though you know i know you look at me like I'm supposed to agree with you, and I'm like, <laughs> like I don't, I want don't know. I haven't fucking seen it. <laughs> one day, one day. <laughs> uh, but but that's Grindhouse for you. I got you. That's in a I'm nutshell. Understanding. And, and like I said, Grindhouse is now a catch-all term for all that stuff. 
I got you. Yeah. I'm picking up what you're putting. All right. So back to Machete. <laughs> <laughs> so the officer that told Machete to stand down comes in and... <laughs> So this is early in my movie <laughs> notes. I wrote some Mexican mob boss dude. That would be Torres <laughs> uh, comes in and they end up killing the girl and telling Machete that he should have listened. They have his wife and they cut her head off and they're threatening his daughter and they're going to cut his head off. But they didn't want him to die honorably. So they just set him on fire. So uh, we see here our main bad guy, or, well, one of our main bad guys, <laughs> there's like six of them or something, uh, Steven Seagal, who plays uh, Torres. Now, honestly, I've never been a huge Seagal fan. Okay, thank you. I yeah, do not I, like him. I have <laughs> never been a huge Seagal fan, and personally, I think he's an awful human being, but uh, that's a whole other episode we could do. <laughs> uh, but here, you know, he's really not that bad. He's not too. He's not too much into the movie for you to not like him. But and I, he just is a terrible actor to me. He's always been like that. Okay, <laughs> like some of his movies, like Hard to Kill and stuff. It, I don't know. I'm sure I'm <laughs> pissing off a lot of Seagal fans right now, but like, I just have never been a fan of his. I don't know what it is. But um, uh, so <laughs> of course, it being Seagal, he went full diva on this movie. And any <laughs> outside scenes or the scenes where the the temps were just a little too high. He required a mobile air conditioner to cool him off. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's oh just a little God. snippet of who he is. Uh, there's a whole story of how he, like, I mean, well, first of all, there's a whole story how he kept someone as a sex slave, but we won't go into that. But there's a whole story <laughs> about how, like, this little kid wanted his autograph. <laughs> And he was like pissed off because he interrupted a movie shoot, and so he like told this kid to fuck off. Oh my gosh! Anyway, back to this movie. <laughs> so picture it three years later. I'm picturing it. Texas. It's hot. It's hot. Hot. It's hot. It's hot. I don't know. It just looked hot. It, this whole movie <laughs> looks hot. I know, right? We meet Officer Rivera. Her name is Sartana Rivera. Sartana. Yeah. S Stop it. It's exotic. Sartana. Sartana. <laughs> anyway, I'm calling her officer, or I'm just calling her Rivera. Okay. okay. And she's taking pictures of a woman named Luce, uh -huh. who is running a taco cart. Uh, Machete's there, and he's working at this site. It is a, you know, I guess they are working there, but also it's people- It's day labor. It's a day labor yeah, place. Day labor, yeah. Like, so people, thing. white people drive up, get, they get their day laborers <laughs> yeah. and then, then they drop them back off at this place. Yeah. Um, Rivera is there trying to find illegal immigrants or people being brought over from the border. So yes, this movie, uh, it kind of says a lot about of uh, illegal immigration, but that wasn't the original plan Rodriguez had with the movie. You know, he was purely just going straight for exploitation, um, uh, you, using Mexican immigrants and violence as the exploitive factor. You know, okay. Uh, but but I think subconsciously <laughs> that idea that Mexican immigrants don't really have anyone to rely on but each other in this country kind of bleeds its way to the surface. I, I really don't care how much he says he wasn't aiming for that because this <laughs> right. movie goes there. <laughs> um, and the scary part is this was 2010. Now keep that in mind as we go through this movie, but here in a bit, <laughs> here in a bit, we get talks of a border wall being built and paid by Mexican labor. <laughs> It was a prediction. I, I think Donald Trump watched this fucking movie. <laughs> I think that's what happened. And he was like, that's a good idea. <laughs> we should do that. We should do that. <laughs> I can't talk like him. I don't know. Somebody bring in my orange. Uh, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I don't care what Rodriguez says. I really think he either subconsciously did that or it's there on purpose um, because it's all on the nose, man. <laughs> There's no hidden meaning here. Right. Uh, but um, 
But we also, what's nice about uh, Sartana is we get a nice duality of her. You know what I mean? Uh, we find out that she's an ICE agent and she battles with who she is and what she does for a living. You know? <laughs> Because she's a Mexican, yes. hunting Mexican. She's a Mexican ice agent. That's what I said. Uh, it's all on the uh, on the nose. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so um, but she has to discover, you know, that to do the right thing, she's going to have to skate that gray area between law and order and what's right. And <laughs> and it's kind of a. I like that idea because you always see like, uh, well, like with the Black Lives Matter thing, uh, the, the the riots that were held and stuff uh-huh. like that, which we're supporters of. I mean, they're everybody not right. They that. weren't riots. No, no, they weren't riots. They were protests. Right. But um, but you know what I mean? Like uh, you would see black officers mixed with the white people, with the white officers and stuff. And you always kind of wonder, like, what struggle does that person do? Right. With? You know, right. like what struggle does that person go through? And, and, and I think, uh, Sartana, well, Sartana goes the right way at the end of the movie, <laughs> but you know, it kind of shows you a little bit, a little glimpse into that kind of life. Right. And it may not necessarily be the right way. No, no. But for her, oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> 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 so, at the border, there's a van pool of people that let a, um, a bunch of people out, and these people start to walk across the border. There's cops there, uh-huh. and some of the people get away, but they stop a pregnant woman and kill her and shoot her in the fucking stomach. Yeah. And then they kill another kid, and the senator of Texas is the one to shoot the kid. And yes. They're filming it. Yes. Which will come into play later on. Uh, but like, okay, so the thing is, like, a lot of people, they're, they're and I'll read a few reviews at the end of this episode because <laughs> I have some great ones for you guys. Um, I don't often do that, but when I come across some funny ass negative reviews, I got I to gotta <laughs> read them. But um, anyway, so most of the people who had a huge problem with this movie was that they were like, oh, it paints uh, senators and our politicians and the U.S. as some kind of uh, mean people that kill Mexicans and stuff like that. I'm like, uh. They are mean people that <laughs> and, kill Mexicans. And these are reviews made in 2010. And I was just like, oh, oh, you guys' reviews did not age well. <laughs> it did not age well at all. Uh, but, I mean, honestly, this kind of shit happens. All you got to do is just go read. Right. Like, it's their stories out there. I don't understand. Again, it goes back to my thing on like, does nobody research things? I don't know. Has like, anybody ever been to Texas? Yes. And, Southern and Texas? And these aren't. First, I I need to clear this up. These aren't cops. You know, this is more of a border patrol situation. Right. These are like vigilantes. These are just people doing this. Right. <laughs> yeah, which that's a thing. What and, do they call? They call them the vigilantes. Yeah, yeah. And that's literally a thing down there on the border. Yes. That's not, a, yes. this is not completely made up. <laughs> it may be exaggerated, but this is not completely made up. Right. And um, the other thing is like uh, there are uh, – there are coyotes down there and stuff in Mexico that you pay like God an ungodly amount of money to try to get transported over the border. And half the time, some of those coyotes aren't trustworthy. They'll rape you. They'll fucking steal oh, your shit. Yeah. They'll kill you, leave you for dead, uh, take your money and then drop you off somewhere. Know when you're going to get killed. It's it's insanity. <laughs> right. And so anyway, uh <laughs> I, I told myself I wasn't going to get too political with this, but, you know, I how do you not <laughs> I mean, look at the movie? Uh, but the senator here is played by the legendary Robert De Niro. Now, uh, I love a good Robert. Uh, right. Uh, now, Chris Cooper, who shot Kevin Spacey in the fucking head, thankfully, in American Beauty, was supposed to play <laughs> <laughs> was to, supposed to play Senator McLaughlin here or McLaughlin. Sorry. Uh, but he turned down the role after reading the script and saying it was the most ridiculous thing he ever read. <laughs> Uh, apparently he didn't read American Beauty, but now <laughs> <laughs> that was- there, it, there is 10 minutes of a man looking at a bag floating in the wind <laughs> explaining how beautiful it is. Anyway. Um, Do you ever feel <laughs> like a plastic bag? Fuck. <laughs> fuck. Oh. Yeah, oh, man. In retrospect, that scene where he gets his brains blown out. Oh, that's it's nice after we, we know about Kevin oh, Spacey. Oh, yeah. Anyway. N- now... <laughs> Now, it was the inclusion of Robert De Niro in the cast that made some of the headliners come running. Uh, 
Oh, of course. I mean, it's Robert De Niro, Academy right. Award winning actor, <laughs> um, who said fuck Trump in that one thing. Ah, oh, God, I love Robert De Niro. Anyway, <laughs> what De Niro loved about his character and the movie is that it was such a fun role. And a great thing to do with a sense of irony. Oh, you, yeah. You can tell throughout this entire movie. <laughs> He's having a good he time. He is having a good time playing this fucking character. <laughs> and uh, same with everyone else. That's, oh, yeah. that's what makes this movie really work. Everybody's in on the joke. Everybody knows this isn't serious. <laughs> and everybody's having a blast oh, doing yeah. this movie. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. No, it's okay. So... Sen er, Senator McLaughlin is running for uh, a second term yeah, yeah. as senator of Texas, and his whole campaign is keeping illegals out of Texas. Oh, my God. We, we got a politician running for a second term. I really do think. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I really fucking think a certain oh Dick Orange watched this fucking movie. You know what? What? what maybe he sent those people... Cheeto head sent those people <laughs> sent those people to the Capitol, and they were going to have them actually attack Trump, so the, that he would get reelected. I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is <laughs> I, I think Robert Rodriguez can tell the future, and he's trying to tell us something with his films. <laughs> so we probably need to watch. We <laughs> need close. We need machete. Machete. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. So we get this awful campaign commercial. Yes, I love this. I love these mock campaign commercials throughout <laughs> this entire movie because they're so so perfect. <laughs> Oh, if they tried to actually do that, though, that was not cool. <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever seen some of those? They get pretty fucking nasty, <laughs> especially on the local level. Like, you'll see some fucked up oh, shit on there. Oh, yes. I Be have the local ones. Yeah, because technically, they don't have to tell the truth in those. Right. <laughs> That's technically and it was funny because at the end, it's like, paid for by the people well, that paid for this. <laughs> something like, <laughs> something along those lines. Like it was really yeah, funny. Like I said, the, the, the comedy in this movie is directly oh, on yeah. the nose. So if you don't pick up on what's humorous about this movie, you probably just well, need to watch it again. Well, I'll read you the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so at the work site, they are all standing around. Um betting on fights mm -hmm. so they asked machete if he wants to fight and he's like no nah. and he was like so you don't want to win five hundred dollars he's like oh fuck yeah so he starts to fight and doesn't even put down his burrito or taco or whatever it is he he's doesn't eating. even land a blow he's just <laughs> ducking this dude's swings right and um we see someone watching him from the car uh machete wins this fight and goes and pays for his meal from the taco truck because L Luce had given him a meal earlier for yeah, free yeah. because it was his first day. Yeah. Uh, so back in 2010, Arizona passed one of the harshest anti-illegal immigration acts, simply called Arizona AN 1070. Now, uh, at the same time... <laughs> I love this. At the same time, a trailer was released through Ain't It Cool News on Cinco de Mayo uh, that began with Danny Trejo saying, this is Machete, and I have a special Cinco de Mayo message for Arizona. <laughs> then immediately it went into scenes of Machete carnage <laughs> and oh my insinuated God. a Mexican revolt. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that would be so awesome. Of course, several websites reported this as the official teaser trailer for <laughs> Machete. <laughs> but that was squashed by Robert Rodriguez, who said it was a Cinco it, it was Cinco de Mayo and he had too much tequila and put it out because he thought it was funny. <laughs> and it really fucking was, honestly. Right. <laughs> of course, racists and anti immigration supporters got their panties in a bunch as you know. And fucking complained. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they did. Always. Um, which, oh, uh, God. Uh, as someone who comes from like a Mexican immigrated background, you know, uh, I can even trace a few family members who immigrated to this country, first of all. Uh, I think my great great grandpa was the one that immigrated over. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Correctly. I don't know. Your uh, mom never told me. Well, yeah. Well, my mom's maiden name is Regalado. <laughs> I, well, I know yeah, that. Oh, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, you, I, I would love to do a blood test and see exactly who I'm related to. But, like, there's... <gasps> Danny Trejo. That would be cool. But, like, <laughs> but there is a... 
there's stories that my grandpa used to tell about Pancho Villa and how like our family was, I don't know. Anyway. Did he uh, speak in Spanish? I, uh, my grandpa? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, was he telling you these stories in Spanish? No, no, no. He never taught me Spanish, um, but he spoke, uh, uh, Papa is what I called him, <laughs> but he, he spoke uh, uh, broken English. Um, he, he could, I only met him the one time. Yeah, yeah. One and, or two times. Yeah, like full blood Mexican. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, full blood. Oh, yeah. He did used to tell me about stories of, uh, you know, how he was treated growing up and stuff. I mean, you know, called Beaner and all oh, sorts yeah. of shit, not allowed to sit in certain spots. Uh, but um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll just say this. Uh, my my view on this whole situation is America is an immigrant nation. Yes, we were founded by immigrants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the only Americans who are truly American native Americans, in fact, right. are the only ones who can say they are native to this country. <laughs> All of us are immigrants in one way or another. And uh, I think to say otherwise is anti-American, but that's just me. So, Oh, controversy. I know, shots fired. <laughs> so Rivera goes and orders some coffee from Luce mm -hmm. at the taco truck. She asks if she has her papers. They exchange badges yeah. and talk immigration laws a little bit before Rivera just takes her tacos and leaves because Rivera knows that Luce is doing something with immigration. Yeah. And it's illegal, whatever she's doing. Yeah. She doesn't know exactly how far it goes yet. Right. And, and I like that, honestly, not to get too film schooly, but like, <laughs> I like this because these two women are a contrast of each other. Oh you know, yeah. Uh, Luce represents uh, good. They're both good. Right. But they are working on opposite sides. Like right. one is law and order good and the other one is more uh, what's morally good. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So Booth was the man that was watching Machete. Why did I say it like that? I don't Whatever. know. I've been saying it. I, I did. <laughs> I did a guest appearance on uh, the Steve Strauss show. And um, which, by the way, you guys, uh, I'll put up links on all our social medias when they get that episode done. It, it was a great little sit down, little talk we had. I, I loved it. Uh, but um, I did a little interview and I said it like that. I know. They were like, what's your upcoming episode? I was like, machete. <laughs> I was like, oh, um. Sorry, yeah, machete. <laughs> machete. <laughs> machete. Not machete. Uh, but <laughs> so anyway, uh, Booth picks up Machete and asks him if he's ever killed anyone. Uh -huh. Then drives him to his office. He asks if he knows the senator and tells him that he wants all the illegals out. The senator does. Yeah. But Booth doesn't want that. Uh, because Texas runs on the work of illegals for cheap labor. In fact, this entire country runs on that. <laughs> right. Uh, so Booth wants the senator dead. He offers Machete $150,000 cash to do it. Machete says no. And Booth says it needs to happen tomorrow. And Booth says, if you don't do it, then you're going to die. Yeah, basically. Uh, so, um... Okay, I'll I'll say one more thing about the oh shit. Thing. I'm so sorry, everybody. I have to say this, but like the thing is, like I don't think we have an immigration problem. I think we have a CEO corporate problem. Well, yeah, we know that. That's the problem we have is businesses. Yes. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah, you know this. I do. <laughs> but a lot of people do not know this. <laughs> That's the issue. I think. Okay, you know how everybody says that that everybody should work retail or customer service of some kind yeah yeah uh, at least like a couple months in their lifetime yeah i think also people should work for a business in a cubicle oh no i agree yeah cubicle work should be a thing i know that sounds weird but then you learn the ins and outs of that business and how fucking corrupt it is business <laughs> Corporations are probably the worst thing ever. I mean, yes, oh, I agree. Yes, they bring a lot of good. They bring a lot of jobs and all that stuff. But mm. at the same time, guess who's hiring these illegal immigrants to work in the company at a lower pay, forcing uh, uh, 
citizens out, you know, American citizens out of the job. Right. The corporations, oh, not, yeah. not the illegal immigrants. They're just here to try to get the American dream. And that's right. the issue. We have sold an American dream to the world. Oh, it's not. It, yes. It's not. It, and all they want. In, in fact, I know it's not to us, but to these people where they come from, it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they would love a chance to get here and to complain like we do. <laughs> right. That's all they want to do. They just want to work and support their families. Right. I mean, Jesus Christ. But that's what my stepsister was telling me because her her boyfriend is from Mexico. He's actually a citizen and all kinds of stuff. But his family still lives in Mexico. So uh-huh. when they went to visit, she was like, it was like a different country. And I was like, Karen, it yeah, is a different it is, country. Yeah, it's but, Mexico. <laughs> okay. She's 23. Okay. Yeah. She's, she's a baby. Her, yeah. <laughs> so she was like, I couldn't live like that. Like no. outdoor kitchens, outdoor bathrooms, all kinds of stuff. The and water she's, isn't good. You can't the drink water, the water. No, you cannot drink the water. She said it smells bad all the time. But yeah, you know, we're not bad mouthing the country of Mexico. It, oh, you know, no, it, no, it, no, It's no. a beautiful country. But like the, but where, the government. You know, oh, right. That's what's corrupt. And then you have the cartels and it's just mm-hmm. it sucks. <laughs> like, guys, Karen just said she didn't want to live where like wherever Pedro's family lives. Yeah. Um, and I think your example of having to work in a cubicle and stuff like that and learning how that feels. I think it could go for the same way. I think people should have to live like they live for a day and see why oh, they're trying the to immigrate over. The CEOs of companies need to live like. Well, no, I'm thinking everybody needs to live like uh, some of these people that are trying to immigrate over just to save their lives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we're getting. I think we're going into a separate podcast that we need to start on its own if we're going to get this <laughs> deep. But Booth, uh, Booth here is played by Jeff Fahey, and he is no mystery to low budget B exploitation or sci fi movies or anything like that. Hell, I have to. I have to tell you. Okay. I wanted to see him without a shirt. Oh, you are you? If we do lawnmower man, you're going to see plenty of that. Is he buff? Uh, he's normal buff. Okay, okay. Yeah, he's I a normal you. looking dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you. Good That's looking cool. guy, Jeff Faye is. Oh. I, I gotta say. There's oh. A, but he's been in a lot of horror movies. And oh. he's no stranger to Robert Rodriguez, as he also appeared in Planet Terror. Uh, but I think we all remember him, like I said, from uh, <laughs> The Lawnmower Man, uh, starring alongside Pierce Brosnan, a movie so... <laughs> A movie that was originally based on a Stephen King book, but Stephen King had his name taken off of that. <laughs> uh, but he was also uh, one of the original actors who appeared in the fake trailer of Machete oh, nice, and stuff like nice. that. Yeah, there's a few actors that actually, uh, in fact, there's a few scenes that they still write from the trailer. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. So Booth then shows Machete a table full of guns and tells him where he needs to be and when, then gives him a phone for backup. Uh, for some reason, this whole exchange here with Machete and Booth reminds me of Escape from New York. You know, there that oh, scene it where did. he's yeah, yeah for where he's sure. shooting up. Uh, which you know, you know, you know what? No. How about we just let Danny Trejo play Snake Plissken? Oh, that would be, that so, would be cool. so cool. <laughs> I agree. That would be awesome. That's right. I said it. Trejo for Snake. <laughs> I agree. I that would be so bad. He would be the only one. And this movie really <laughs> does sneak the high heaven of Escape from New York when you think about it. Kind of. Everybody thought he was dead and he's back. <laughs> right. But you know, like that would be so badass. I want Danny Trejo in a in a Escape from New York. <laughs> that would be cool. So Booth goes to a house to get his daughter April. Kills everybody inside, and he's pissed because this is the second time he's had to take down his drug operation for her. <laughs> and oh, April's his daughter. I already said that. But yeah, yeah. so we're seeing the corruption here already. We just think he's like some businessman wanting to kill the senator. He's a drug dude. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah. He's dirty. You know, he's not. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a thing for Faye. <laughs> Oh, well, I did. Well, he will appear on the show more than once, so don't worry. You're going to get your fate. <laughs> okay, in the beginning of this movie, uh-huh. I did. When we get to the other parts, I'll tell you, not this character. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not this character. Oh, this character's 
terrible, <laughs> but I like him. He's a good evil. Like he's a good, uh, he's a good mustache twirling evil villain. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, so here we have Lindsay Lohan as April. <laughs> Ooh. And I think it should Ooh. be said that I have a thing for Lohan. <laughs> Hell, oh, me I grew, too. I grew up having a thing for Lohan. You did too. We grew up with oh, Lohan. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, during 2010, however, uh, July 6th to be precise, Lohan was ordered to serve 90 days in jail and another 90 days on drug and alcohol rehab for missing alcohol counseling sessions and violating probation. <laughs> so she wasn't going through the best times. Um <laughs> She wasn't able to attend the premiere of this movie, in fact, uh, but the cast uh, and Danny Trejo, in fact, uh, said that she was nothing but professional and a pleasure to work with. And she did a great job. Now, uh, she got the role in 2009 and even dyed her hair from auburn to platinum blonde for this, which uh, I think she really digs because I think she's kept it that way. for. Yeah, it's. I think yeah. it's still like that. Yeah, I, I think she shot her scenes in about five days. Uh, but honestly, this was a kind of a big comeback for her and we'll talk about mm -hmm. how successful uh, machete was later uh but she had she had fallen into what many child actors fall into and that's trouble drugs alcohol and bad business deals um, all the, of that and the bad business deals had to do with her parents yes and as, and i believe before this she had released that uh, i know who kills me movie which was a terrible terrible movie <laughs> uh but this one this movie here actually proved that she was still a competent actor, even though she wouldn't really go on to do much after this. Uh, but I do hear that uh, she has a movie in pre-production right now, a horror movie called Curse, starring alongside uh, Mickey Rourke. So we'll see how that pans out. You know, Is she going to be naked? I don't know. Well, she needs to be. <laughs> I don't know. She needs and you to know, be. And you know, I, I think I, I explained this to you because you sent me a message in the middle of the day. Just like, <laughs> oh my God, Lohan's naked in this. <laughs> yes. And I was like, yeah, sort of. There's scenes where she is nude and that's really her. With, but she has her uh, her hair over her breasts. Mm. That's her nude. Right. But um, there is a scene later. <laughs> I love that scene. Um, there's a scene later that isn't her. It's a body double because uh, like uh, we'll discuss with Jessica Alba, she has a no nudity clause in her contract. Oh, okay. Which doesn't, I, I hear this all the time from fans and stuff where they're like, oh, they're just uptight. They refuse to do nudity and stuff. It's like, no, some people just don't want their body on, right. on the screen and that's fine. It's respectable. You know, right. That, that's fine. Uh, but. But oh, anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> Machete is looking at pictures of his family. He then gives the briefcase of cash to Luce to help the people that she helps. Uh -huh. um, the senator is speaking at a rally and Machete is dressed as a janitor in the building that he's going to go shoot from. Yeah. And he goes up to two. To shoot. To shoot him. Uh, so we're about to get a classic double cross. <laughs> so more Danny Trejo love here for a second though. Uh but we, we kind of have a we had a short rundown on Danny's road to acting in From Dust Till Dawn that episode. So go listen to that. We talk about him in there, but uh my lord is he proficient. Like I said 300 and something roles in county. <laughs> Right. Is what Danny has under his belt. Uh, yeah, sure, a lot of them are B-movies and things of that nature. But he also slides over into some Holly uh, some of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters, like Con Air and uh, Heat from 1995 with Al Pacino and, well, Robert De Niro. <laughs> like I said, he's worked with almost everybody. What Danny excels at is playing these rough, mean characters because he kind of knows how that goes because he was a drug dealer. He was a heroin addict. I mean – Oh, really? He, San Quentin. He spent 11 years in and out of jail. Um, but in reality, he's a giant teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> right. He uh, looks scary, though. Yeah, he does. He has that mean look to him, and, and that does kind of typecast him here and there. Right. But he ha – I mean, he has <laughs> – what I love is he has Treo's Tacos in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles area, and even Treo's Coffee and Donuts now. Uh Treo's Tacos even offers some vegan-friendly items, so there's no excuse to go there and show some love if you're in the area. Um, one of the things that sets Danny apart from most people is his generosity, though. You know, uh, he embraced helping others as a way of maintaining his sobriety. Um, as he puts it in his own words, everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone. And no matter how busy he gets, 
He always makes time to talk to others seeking to change their life at 12-step meetings. So, yes, Danny Trejo is a goddamn treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. So, someone from another building shoots Machete, then shoots the senator in the leg. Machete is g going out of the building and takes a hostage, kind of. Uh, he shoots the people waiting for him and then runs out. He gets picked up by Grice, dressed as cops, and going to take him to Sniper, which is their boss. Yeah, and and, and this is the guy that shot from the building, and you know, um, oh, the guy Sniper is the guy that shot from the building. Okay. Yeah, and that's been hanging out with a uh, booth and stuff, and his right. name literally is just Sniper in the movie. They yeah, just, that's in the cast list. His name's just Sniper. Yeah, Machete ends up stabbing um, the guy that's driving. And they wreck in the car, catches fire. Uh, blows up. <laughs> it blows up. Sorry. It blows up. I'm sorry. Catches you fire. left it out. He jumps away from an explosion. <laughs> uh, my favorite scenes are in this movie are the ones that are just way over the top. The over the top action scenes in 2010, no one was really doing these kinds of action <laughs> flicks anymore, you know, uh, which would it, it, they're just pure stupid fun. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you did have a, the Expendables, which was that uh, the geriatric action flick, but uh, <laughs> you had the Losers, a terrible comic book movie, and I guess Kick Ass was pretty stupid action. But at the same time, all those flicks kind of took themselves a little too seriously. Uh, Machete leaves the seriousness at the door, <laughs> and has stuff like this scene where Machete stabs a man in the spine and is able to make him turn a car. <laughs> Right. With each twist of the machete. And we will discuss it, uh, but well, audiences absolutely cr love this. Oh, yeah. When it hits the screen. And I think we actually, like, we need more movies that follow this grindhouse type of formula. Oh, we yeah. We need more exploitation movies. We need more dumb movies because things get way too serious in real life and we need to escape. Right, <laughs> right. So... At the Torres estate in Mexico, Booth calls Torres and tells him uh, uh, and shows him footage of the shooting. Tells uh -huh. him about the shooting. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the take I got from this scene, though, is that Booth and Torres are actually working with the senator to get whatever they want from him. Yeah, there's like so many Double cross this. Double cross. Right. Like, double right. cross. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I try to like. I try to really like just get to the point, yeah, in all of this, um, but that's what I took from this scene, and Taurus asks about machete because in the video that booth shows yeah, him, yeah. you can see machete, and Booth says that he will be dead on the rooftop within minutes, but we know. <laughs> that Torres knows who Machete is. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of like a. <laughs> he's like, oh fuck. Uh, now, uh, Machete don't die. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing you'll notice is Machete barely gets hurt in this movie, and if he does, it's typically not fatal. <laughs> But you know, typically not fatal. He never died. He no, 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 no. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it. Typically not fatal. No, because he doesn't die. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and also, Machete always gets the girl that we see, and we see that coming up for the next like. He gets all the, the girls. The rest of the fucking movie. I think Machete has sex with everyone in this movie. <laughs> I think maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So Machete's at the hospital and the woman says that no one knows he's there because of his illegal status. Mm -hmm. The doctor says that he didn't die from this gunshot because the bullet was stopped <laughs> from another bullet that was there before. So Machete. <laughs> he's been shot in the head before and didn't die. <laughs> so now he's been shot in the same spot. Oh, fuck. So he has all these bullets in him protecting <laughs> him from other bullets. <laughs> Um, Booth's guys show up to the hospital and the girl at the front calls and warns the people in the, um, in the room. Yeah. Cause as we will come to find out that this, this entire hospital is connected with the, the network, the network, right. we learn about that later. Um, machete grabs some tools and makes weapons, of course. Oh, I love it. Then distracts the guys and starts to kill them. <laughs> and then he jumps out of a bunch of windows and escapes. 
by using a man's intestines. <laughs> okay, I didn't add that in there, and I was like, I know he's going to add that. Uh, by using, he uses a guy's intestines to swing out of a window, <laughs> which when I saw this in theaters, all of us Grindhouse nerds applauded. <laughs> this was one of those rare applause movies. You know, <laughs> you, you don't get those typically much anymore. Right. Where something awesome happens and everybody claps and hoots and hollers and stuff, which I, I miss it when theater audience. When a theater audience gets involved, I, I fucking love that. Uh, the you know, in a positive way, right? Uh, you'd have a you'd have that at the grindhouse uh, grindhouses back in the day. You know, when Forty Second Street was booming, audiences would laugh, applaud, and it was a communal thing. That that's what I miss about movies, and that's right. that's why typically I don't go to the theaters. I know that sounds weird because I'm such a movie <laughs> nerd, and you would think I'd be there, but that's why I just don't go. Um, Nowadays, big studios and chain theaters are, are, are way too buttoned up for me. <laughs> right, right. And and can we talk about the fucking recliners? Oh, my God. Because theaters cannot complain about this direct to uh, VOD thing nowadays. Because honestly, with the addition of recliners, they set this whole theater at home thing in motion. I agree. I complained about this before COVID, in fact, uh, before theaters <laughs> were losing funds and going out of business. I complained about the fact that, like, the addition of recliners, and I know that sounds like such a th <laughs> weird thing to get hung up on, but the addition of recliners makes you think about being at home. Right. Like, at that point, you're just like, well, you know, I can buy an 85-inch fucking TV. And I can recreate this at home in my recliner. Right, exactly. Like, at this point, why am I paying this kind of money? <laughs> why? I agree. The popcorn flavor? I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, by the way, it's the worst thing that ever happened. Beca because I can sleep anywhere while oh, watching a movie. Oh, my God. And this just makes me want to sleep more while watching exactly. a movie. Exactly. I miss the old fucking theater seats that just folded down and you sat they, your ass in them i love some of them were extra crispy and it was <laughs> dirty i love the eaton square seats yes they because they have that. tables in front of them do you remember that D that too is kind of a thing for me because i'm like well now do you got people because i remember the last time I, oh, one of the times i went to eaton square by myself i don't think you guys were with me but i went to my uh, oh this is way before i met you uh this is when i went to go see star wars um the force awakens but like when i was at the eaton square cinema i remember one uh, uh, there was a lady next to me at the table and she had brought like home cooked Dinner. Oh yeah. It was oh, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> it was like some kind of fish dish. Oh, and it was stinking no. up that theater from high heaven and it was just I don't know the <laughs> heat from the fish <laughs> was like I could feel it and I could smell it and it I almost barfed in my fucking popcorn. Oh my god. It was That's terrible. So funny. But I love, I love that the tables are there. The seats are old. Half of them are broken. Fucking rickety. You might be sitting and come. I miss that. Right. I miss that from a theater. I want a nasty ass theater. <laughs> Just as long as there's not a lady cooking fish in there. Uh, yes. Uh, that 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 is the worst sin you can do as an audience member is bring hot food into a theater. Well. Like hot one fish, but it any hot food. Like one time, somebody brought fucking McDonald's. Oh yeah, and I was just sitting there. I was like, God oh, damn it, no. Were you just mad that you didn't have any McDonald's? I honestly don't care for McDonald's anymore. Well, I meant back then. Uh, maybe no, not really, because again, <laughs> the heat and the smell, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh god, I don't want to smell what you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh popcorn gosh. or candy or a bust that's all you get at a theater <laughs> and, and some of these theaters introduced restaurants so then you have these fucking fat greasy dudes piling in with pizzas <laughs> and this is stop it stop it and that's what i mean that's a home experience <laughs> right. so what are we doing <laughs> like i have no idea i would love to see grindhouses make a comeback for that very reason and that's why I'm like, man, it is primed because I'm sure there's more people like me out there who would love to see the old school theaters come back, like with the rickety seats and all that oh, shit. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. 
So Rivera gets a call about the shooting and she sees Machete on the news and says she knows him. Oh, she goes to talk to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so she goes to investigate. Investigate. Uh, Machete's walking in an alleyway and Luce comes and picks him up. She takes him to her house and he sees clippings of her all over the house and asks if she is she. <laughs> That's what she's called. I think it's supposed to be like Shay. Like they, they Shay said Rivera. She, they said she. Oh, okay. Okay. So she. Okay. Yeah. I was like, what? But whatever. <laughs> and Lou says, no, that is just something that she's made up to save people. Uh, she says, now she can't do anything because, oh, huh? She says now she can't do anything because there's nothing worth fighting for. She says, uh, she oh, she says his name. She says Machete, and he looks at her. She's like, I know you. I know the legend of you. Uh-huh. And um, this is very weird scene, and I am going to describe it very wrong. But he's kind of looking at her like, oh, sexual. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're about to do it. And she's like... Uh, she's like, no, that's not going to happen or whatever. And then she jumps on him. Yeah. Okay. So, and also you were like really confused by this egg thing in the scene. So she takes this egg and she like waves it in his face and Uh all over his body and then cracks the egg underneath the bed. Okay. I'll, I'll just sum this up real quick. All that is, is just an old medicine trick where, uh, you, uh, you take an egg and you're supposed to uh, rub it over your body and stuff like that, and then crack it under the the floor and stuff, and it, and it or uh, under the bed, and it's supposed to like remove the, the bad things from your body and stuff mm. overnight. Kind of like white people have onions in your socks when you're sleeping, you know that kind of shit. Right. That's the sex is not almost. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> Machete gets it on. <laughs> well implied, at least you know. I'm guessing Machete does don't kiss and tell unless it's a daughter mom thing which we'll get to that um <laughs> point is bad guys aren't the only thing he's stabbing huh dun dun, uh, dun. everybody all right uh machete also harkens back to classic action flips flicks you know even if you had no idea that this is trying to be classic exploitation it it still reminds you of those awesome tune out movies you know of the 80s like any arnold movie first of all right uh, rambo uh, just anything where the hero should fucking be dead but somehow remains unscathed through the entire flick <laughs> uh what i think made machete so popular was how it appealed to every type of audience you could imagine. Uh, you had Grindhouse fans. You had action movie fans. Trejo fans. Film buffs could read in as much hidden messages as they want in this thing. <laughs> and casual movie fans can laugh and have a great time. It's a fun movie. And that's the genius of Robert Rodriguez, man. He knows how to put butts in seats. Right. He knows audiences. And that that's... One of the huge things about him is, I mean, he has a Spy Kids series. He knows how to appeal to family right. and stuff. I is, Speaking of family, he just directed one of the best episodes of The Mandalorian for Disney. Oh, nice. So, I mean, he knows audiences. Right. And he knows how to get it in. And if he wants a mixed audience, here's He'll, Machete. Right. <laughs> like, you get a mixed audience here. So since we're talking about, like, fans of this movie uh-huh. or whatever. Uh-huh. My ex mother in law. This is the only thing I knew about this movie is that she fucking loved this movie. I guess she talked about it probably weekly, and she probably watched it at, at least once every two weeks. And that's very surprising to me because I've met her, and I would not think she would be a Machete fan. <laughs> right. So I was like, "That's awesome." <laughs> See, and that's the thing: Machete can appeal to everybody. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Some people are going to hate this movie, and we will talk about people who hate it unnaturally. There is an unnatural hate, <laughs> but I do see if Machete isn't your bag of goodies. You know, I understand you skipping it, but. It is. I don't know how this hit such a chord with everyone. I don't know, but she loved this movie so much. (laughs) And I lived with her for a short time and I never watched it, but she would watch it all the time and talked about it all the time because this came out in 2010. Uh huh. And Cade was born in 2010. Yeah. Which is my oldest son and her grandson. Yeah. Um, So obviously we spent a lot of time together, but. 
Yeah, she loved this movie so much. Uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing. <laughs> Rivera goes to find Machete, uh, but no one is at the labor site. She then goes home and is searching for him on her database thing. Yeah. And we get a weird scene of her showering for some reason. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to see it. But, like, <laughs> I didn't need it. But I guess I did need it. But you wanted to see it. That's the thing. <laughs> Who doesn't want to see Jessica Alba? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> the crushes. The crushes. In Why are there movie. so many pretty people Jessica in this movie? Alba was another one that I grew up watching on. Uh, Dark Angel. That was the first thing I ever saw her in, which was a television show that is actually a very good television show. Maybe one day I'll, I'll show you a few episodes of it. It's, it's really good. <laughs> but, uh, but no, just the amount of crushes in this movie. Why are there so many pretty people in this movie? I mean, uh, why not? Well, but... I will tell you, actually, here in a minute. <laughs> I have an explanation for that, too. Everything. Mm-hmm. So, Sartana or Agent Rivera, uh, is played by Jessica Alba, as we, you know, as we just stated, (laughs) uh, who has a no nudity clause in her contract, like I said. And you may be asking yourself, why just leave the nudity out? Why not just do that? Uh, Because Jessica Alba? (laughs) Well, Rodriguez's sister actually helped edit this flick and helped her brother. And her input on this thing was to add more nudity and hot chicks. Yeah. Seriously, add more hot chicks was her note to her brother. (laughs) So Rodriguez obliged and added as much as he can, uh, which isn't a lot if you really break it down. You know, it just seems like it's a lot. Well, it is kind of a lot. I mean, there is boobs in every other scene. (laughs) Right. uh, But to get around the whole no nudity thing, uh, they had Jessica Alba do this scene, uh, and she was wearing underwear, you know, um, full coverage and stuff, and wasn't actually nude. But then they went back and digitally removed her underwear and added nudity from a body double. Nice. Yeah. Uh, necessary? No. But hey, boobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, uh, by the way, if you pay close attention uh, to the file she brings up on that um, uh, her database, mm-hmm. uh, Machete has a-, a lot of character names that he played in other Rodriguez movies listed as his aliases, which oh, I thought nice. it's pretty neat. Yeah. So Booth is at home with his wife and daughter, April in June. Mm-hmm. Fucking stupid. April, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I don't know why that annoyed me so much, but it did. Um, April says that her boyfriend is going to propose to her, but she has priorities like her online modeling and I'm using air, air quotes here for modeling. <laughs> modeling. <laughs> um, Sniper calls him and says uh, that Machete got away. So Sniper goes down to the lab- labor site and asks where the taco truck is. The guy he's asking uh, finally gives up her location because Sniper's pointing a gun at him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Machete's inside and hears them outside. One of Sniper's guys goes up to the door. And this is my favorite part <laughs> in the whole movie. Okay? Yes. A machete comes through the door and through the guy's head. Oh, and he's stuck on this fucking door. Stuck. Michael Myers style. <laughs> yes. for like the rest of the scene. I love it. So they go inside, look for Machete. And uh, of course, Machete kills them. Yeah. Uh, Sniper's outside and has a bomb that he thro- throws out the window. Yeah. Uh, so Tito Loriva um, from Tito and Tarantula and the lead singer in the band from the Titty Twister and from Dust Till Dawn, actually, originally portrayed Sniper in this movie. Uh, well, in the trailer, he portrayed Sniper. Okay. Uh, but he was replaced in the movie with Shea Wiggum. And uh, Loriva actually does make a quick little cameo as a, a luchador later on, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> which comes out of nowhere. That's what those it. things are called. Luchadors, yeah. Um, Shea Wiggum, uh, who is known for playing these side characters, and he's a very good actor at playing assholes. In fact, you remember him as one of the head uh, DEA agents in uh, that uh, that uh, oh, that movie we watched on um, – Waco, the the Waco show. Okay, uh, the, yeah. The Waco show. <laughs> I know what you're talking the about. The Waco show. With, <laughs> I know what you're talking David about. David Koresh. <laughs> no, no. The the movie Waco. Uh, he was in that. Uh, he played the head D, uh, one of the head DEA agents. Okay, yeah, that? I know who you're talking about. Uh, but he's great at playing these asshole characters, and um, and that's something you'll notice about Rodriguez. 
and even Tarantino, they love taking these supporting actors and giving them kind of larger roles, you know, more involved little uh, roles here. Uh, kind of the Al Adamson way of uh, taking like former big budget movie stars as well. You know, they'll do that. They'll take big former headliners and give them second chances in their movies as like these other characters. Right. Um, as we can see with the inclusion of Stephen Skull in this movie, <laughs> which... I hate Steven Seagal, but um, it's definitely worth mentioning that even though Robert Rodriguez is known for his lone wolf kind of style of directing and filmmaking, he brought on a second director to help out in this movie um, uh, who worked on Sin City. With Stupid Rodriguez. movie. <laughs> okay, so uh, hang on. That's the movie with the red tie, right? No, 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 no. Okay. You're thinking of the spirit. Oh, okay. You're yeah, right. Sin You're City, right. I don't think you've ever seen. No, I haven't. Okay, sorry. I, I like, like it. it. It's kind of a... I don't know. It's it's kind of a, a you either love it or you hate it kind of movie. The Spirit or it's, Sin City? Sin City. It's an acquired taste. Oh, okay. uh, but um, but yeah, um, th that was uh, Ethan uh, Miniquis, I believe is how you pronounce his last name again. Oklahoma school system. But um, <laughs> but he takes second chair in this movie. Uh, but the two congeal pretty nicely, so it's not very noticeable, you know. So obviously, they work very well together in this movie if it just feels like a Robert Rodriguez thing. And most of the time, when a director brings on a second director to help out, it's usually to shoot other footage and stuff like that. Because also, it's also worth mentioning that uh, Robert Rodriguez was also producing Predators, which had come out, which is a Predator sequel, obviously. Oh, that, okay. uh, that was shooting, in fact, on the same time and the same area. Oh, as fuck. machete so they were often like sharing daylight with each other and stuff like that right so you know like you bring on a second director to help out a little bit right so rivera pulls up to Luce's house and <laughs> as machete is jumping out of the window to get away from the bomb <laughs> uh one of the dead guys falls on her car <laughs> and like she drives away. <laughs> Which is so funny because he falls and Machete had stabbed him in the neck with this like thermometer. This oh, meat yeah. thermometer. And, <laughs> and the thermometer goes up to extra crispy. <laughs> uh, she, she sees Machete and makes him get in the car. She says she knows who he is and she needs him so she can work her way up. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's what she's trying to do in her career yeah she wants to know what he knows he pulls the e-brake on her car takes her gun and points it at her well she is an awful agent first of all oh she's terrible, <laughs> she's terrible. he told her that she was doing trash work yeah because she is yeah they were like I don't know where I'm going to put you so you figure this out <laughs> <laughs> that's what they did yeah uh, Booth and Sniper are talking to Torres about Machete. They're both pissed that Sniper didn't kill him. So Booth strangles Sniper right there, or in front of Torres, uh, FaceTime. Which is kind of cool because <laughs> you see his eyes roll back and everything. It's fucking cool. Right. Uh, and Booth is super fiss pissed that Machete is a federale. Is that how you say that? Yeah, federale. And Torres didn't tell him that. Uh-huh. And Booth is going to call Osiris to kill Machete. <laughs> and Torres says he has 24, 24 hours or he's coming to do it himself. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, one thing to remember is Machete is not to be taken seriously. <laughs> this movie. Oh, yeah. Don't take, don't, don't. <laughs> Just don't take this so seriously. Uh, sure, you can read whatever you want into the subtext, and I, too, think it has a few things to say about immigration and how we treat our Mexican neighbors, but it's still highly just fun, entertaining film that requires you to be in on the joke. Basically, don't go into this movie thinking too seriously about it, <laughs> right. or you're going to be highly disappointed. It's like it, it's it, it'd be it would be like going to the state fair and expecting to do some deep soul searching. You're just going to leave pissed off at the end of the day. <laughs> Why would you do soul search anyway? anyway? Exactly. So Rivera says that she can help him um, because he's illegal in the U.S. and he can't go back to Mexico because of all the shit that happened there. Yeah. She says she can get him papers to get him legal. 
but she has to take him in. He says that he can trust her because they are both cops. Yes. And what I love about Alba's character, like I said, you know, she is the same as Machete as well. You know, so they're both on the good side. Only she chose to follow the law and order aspect of her job much more closely. Opposite of Machete, who pretty <laughs> much does what he sees is right. Machete, which why we're on the subject, is an awesome example of an anti-hero. Right. Now, an anti-heroes are, are uh, characters that go outside the boundaries of justice and do what's right. Uh, the Punisher, for example, is an awesome anti-hero. He goes on a one-man murder spree, killing criminals and people he deems evil. Uh, by the way, the, the food she preps Machete <laughs> in these scenes... Oh, man, it looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I just remembered, I got to hit up the 21st and 31st Street area, and I'm about to go on a tangent. But if anyone listening comes to Tulsa, we have the most authentic Mexican restaurants on one strip of road. You can get probably outside Mexico, I believe. No. I think it's great. It's great for the food Oklahoma. is so good. It's probably – no – it doesn't add up to Texas. You don't think so? No, I, I know so. Oh, I see. I've never eaten Mexican food in Texas. There's good y shit. Yeah. Houston. Oh. I, I mean, nothing <sighs> compares to growing up eating Mexican food. <laughs> From oh, <laughs> my prepared, grandpa but, yeah. and stuff. Uh, but um, I think it's great. And I, I don't know. There, there are food trucks and sit down restaurants. Um, and it, it kind of helps to know a little Spanish because that's mostly what um, they speak. But if you don't, they also have pictures that you can point at. <laughs> <laughs> but my dude, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. Uh, but growing up with a Mexican mother was uh, probably the best thing I ever had because like she who knew how to make these amazing dishes, man. Oh yeah, and and my grandpa could uh, could make a uh, mean carnitas. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom actually makes um, tamales to sell yes. every year. Oh, her tamales are amazing, and I, I can't eat all of them. She always gives me like a, ton. a thousand of them, and I'm like, I can't eat them all. <laughs> She's like, eat some more. <laughs> Have some more. She's like, did you guys like the tamales? Did the kids eat the tamales? Oh, yeah. Did the dogs eat the tamales? But How many tamales do you have left? <laughs> but you know, I would spend time over at my grandpa's. Um, my grandma was the insane white lady, but <laughs> my grandpa was pretty cool. Um, he had, uh, there was one time where you would open the fridge and, you know, being Mexican, they cook with certain things that white people <laughs> aren't exactly used to. So you would open the fridge, there'd be a hog's head just staring at you and shit like that. Oh, man. That's hilarious. So Luce shows her friends an arsenal of guns. Okay, friends. There's these, like, two teenage girl, uh, girls, <laughs> girls, guys. There's these, like, two teenage guys that, it. like, hang out with her yes, or whatever. I love these two characters. They're that... trying to be cholos so bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they are not. Well, one of them really is, but... <laughs> <laughs> the other kid looks white and he, trying to be a child. He's actually also Mexican. By the way, I assumed so. I assumed so. He's but... Hispanic. He's kind of like me. You see me and it's like, oh, that's a white guy. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm part Mexican. Right. <laughs> so she shows them this arsenal of guns that she has and um, says they need more to get ready for the revolution uh -huh. because Vaughn is coming for them. There's so many fucking people in this movie. I, there's so many villains. There's right? so many villains. And we'll talk about Vaughn later on. We'll, I'll kind of discuss him in a minute. Right. Rivera comes busting in with a gun. Luce shows her the network. Yes. That everyone has been talking about. She says that she helped them and shows the people that are trying to stop them. Yeah. She also shows the missing people that were supposed to come over from Mexico and uh -huh. didn't. And which for again, whatever reason. Which again is a real thing. Like I, I explained oh, the yeah. coyotes and uh the border patrol and it's just there's some nasty shit that goes on. Right. Rivera says she's going to act like she didn't see anything, but she wants to talk to Machete. I, I honestly see this network thing, this whole thing as it's something of like a parody on what anti-immigration people think Mexican immigrants do when they get here. Like, like if you listen to some of these anti-immigration people's talk, like how they talk and stuff about the criminal element and the rapists and all that shit that's coming across our borders. Right. They talk about them like they're an army. 
Like, like they're a connected group, <laughs> uh, a network, the network, you know what I mean? Like right. they talk about them like they're just networking together to kill us all when really they're not doing that. And I think it's more like if there was a network, I think it's more of what we have here, you know, like uh, they're just getting together to help each other out because no one else helps. Them, right. You know, I, I, th- I probably believe what happens is these people that already crossed the border come to loose. This is what I imagine happening uh-huh. and saying, Hey, my, my uncle and aunt are going to cross the border on this day. Can you get them set up in a good place? And what you just explained is also a reality. There are people oh, yeah. stationed here in America that are set up to help. You know, like to help you out, help you get started, right. help you stay. Uh, there's always that stereotype of how Mexicans, you know, uh, Mexican Americans are living in one house, and there's a bunch of them in there. That's because they're. Pro- I mean, they come over, and there's nowhere else to go. So it's either you be homeless, or be deported, or be arrested, or assaulted, whatever, right. or you stay with friends or people you know and stuff. So yeah, for sure. Th- so they group together, right? To stay safe. There's always better luck in numbers. Yes. So Machete goes to see Padre Benito <laughs> and wants his help killing all these people. He says that he will see what he can do. Oh, let me explain for a second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Padre Benito is Machete's brother. Yes. But he is called Padre because he is a, pr- a priest. Yeah. Wh- which is another part of a review i have saved for the end that somebody had a problem with. oh my goodness um and he's like i've turned myself over to god i don't do this stuff anymore and yeah. machete's like yeah whatever you're helping me kill these people <laughs> yeah. uh padre tells him that uh booth is the senator's like right hand man yeah he says booth comes in for confession a lot but he also talks about the cartel which we knew he was in drugs yeah yeah he has connections yeah um and padre says it's not safe and he needs to leave like right now yeah uh and machete's like okay and he takes the hearse with him yeah he takes the hearse but he also says and i don't know why i didn't write this down Uh that when booth comes in for confessional he talks about all of these things, but he also talks about having sex with his daughter. Yes, yes, ew. <laughs> and this is where I'm like, oh, yeah, ew. yeah, no. Ew. So again, I though, mean, I also think about having sex with his daughter, but she's not my daughter. So, oh, I was about to, I was like, well, what? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> but anyway, so again, we have Cheech Marin. Uh, as Padre Benito, uh, and he's doing some actual acting again, you know, like uh, from Dust Till Dawn. And right. again, I'll stick to the fact that he's great in these little roles. I love it. I oh, love I whenever Cheech Marin pops up in a Rodriguez flick. It's it's amazing. <laughs> right. So Machete goes to Booth's house and starts fighting the security guys <laughs> these two with security. a pickaxe and a weed eater. <laughs> There's that exploitation thing I told you about. Oh, yeah. Where you take you can take stereotypes and use them as weapons. You see what I mean? Right. That's exploitation. Right. So he hears April and June. I hate that. I didn't mean to say it like that. I think it's so fucking stupid. He hears April and June in the back and he goes to check it out. They are in the pool naked filming some kind of porn, maybe. And Machete joins in. See, they were waiting for the pool guy to come because that's what they were planning on doing. Right. And she's filming it for her modeling career. <laughs> modeling career. Yeah. Um, and he ends up drugging them, well, I assume. I'll talk about that. Okay. And putting them in the back of the hearse. He goes in the house and starts searching through Booth's stuff. And he takes some CDs and leaves the camera for Booth. <laughs> and I think it's implied, honestly, about, you know, you, you thought he drugged him or something. I think it's implied that he got them, like, way drunk and they passed out. I think that's 
What okay, the I didn't know if is. like he had drugged them. And plus, or... he gave them some good machete dick, so you know they're they're done. <laughs> I don't think he had sex with them. <laughs> I don't think he did. Machete? I don't think machete kisses and tells. I think that's the thing. You know. I mean, we saw a video of him kissing them. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. True. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't fucking tell. No, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I mean. Good on him, I guess. There you go. I mean, that's a weird porn that I ain't watching, but... You I don't want to see Machete have sex? Oh, I want to see Machete have sex. Do you I don't think, think... Danny, Do you think Danny Trejo is a good looking dude? He's... He's got this charm good look. It's yeah. Like, it's like since we know how he is in real life, I think it makes him sexy. No. I don't know, man. He looks like he could throw me against the wall, and I'm okay oh, with that. Oh, he's got that bad boy look to him. Oh, that's that's well, what it yeah. is. All right, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Whether he had sex with them or not, I'm not watching the porn because <laughs> this is mother daughter shit, and that's oh, weird yeah, to that me. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Why is that such a thing? I have no idea. It? And why is June such a butterface? Oh, that's mean. <laughs> She is. All right, let's move on. Let's anyway, not anyway. <laughs> so Machete takes the ladies to Padre, and he's he says he'll take care of them. Yeah, yeah. But you know he's trying to. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. He's well, like. He also says, you know, we need more nuns. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Booth goes home, and he finds the camera and watches the video of Machete ah, yeah. with his wife and daughter. Osiris calls Booth and tells him about Padre. And I love the ultimate middle finger. Machete gives him a video of him and his wife and daughter. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) He didn't intend to do any of that. But since it was there, he was like, oh, okay. And and the song that plays during this fucking... Did you hear the... the, Okay, we'll talk about the music. Of course, you got some, (laughs) some awesome... Mexican guitar and stuff like that from Robert Rodriguez and Chicon, um, his band and stuff like that. But, uh, but the song that plays over the scene where he's making out with April and June, sorry about the names, uh, but the song, it's just machete, machete, machete. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. So then we get another campaign commercial uh-huh. and it's exploiting his gunshot. That happened. Yeah. Uh, the senator's in the hospital, and Vaughn calls him saying that his army is waiting for orders. Yeah. And Vaughn tells him, his crewmen, to look for the network, and they will find Machete. Yeah. And uh, so so uh, Senator McLaughlin here is uh, using the, the gunshot thing as like a martyrdom kind of thing. Yeah. So, so that's how we learn, you know how all this is tied together and what he was doing because this helps him get reelected. Um, kind of like a certain someone in COVID. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, the, luckily it, it didn't backfired work. on it him. It backfired, <laughs> which this backfires as well. Uh, Vaughn, the leader of the Trump supporters, I, I mean, a uh, border patrol folks is played by, <laughs> by the legendary Don Johnson of Miami vice. Nash I knew Bridges. I recognized yeah. him. And uh, a boy and his dog, which we will cover that on this show. It's a lovely post-apocalyptic uh, movie. I have an odd love, though, for later career Don Johnson. I don't know why I love him. He pops up in all these <laughs> shows. <laughs> um, though everything he is in now these days, uh, you can tell he's ha- having a, a fucking blast doing it, you know? Oh, yeah. um, I mean, he plays a lot of these characters, in fact, which are obvious parodies on racists <laughs> in Django Unchained, uh, which is a Quentin Tarantino movie. He plays an incompetent leader of the KKK, which the whole KKK group are shown as a group of dumbass white people. Oh, my gosh. I love that scene in Django Unchained because <laughs> that's probably realistically how it is. And I don't know. We might cover Django Unchained on this show. Because I don't, we're covering Machete right now, so I think all right. bets are off. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it, it, in Knives Out, which uh, recently came out, um, a, a love it, it, that that movie is so good. It's like a classic murder mystery movie. But um, he plays another type 
of asshole racist, which is the casual racist. You know, we all know these people. Oh my god, who just casually let that shit slip, and you're like, you're racist as fuck, dude. <laughs> right. Um. In fact, in the movie, uh, in Knives Out, he talks about how immigrants who come here legally are the good ones. <laughs> uh, we all know that kind of person. Like I said, you know. So I have to assume the roles he picks are like these goofy characters lately. <laughs> I guess. And I love that when actors like go from like serious roles and stuff like that to playing like uh, to just having fun. <laughs> He's like, I don't need to be serious. Anymore. Yeah, they're, they're just having a good time. I think. Uh, oh, I don't remember her name. Let's skip that. <laughs> <laughs> Machete takes all of this stuff he found to R Rivera. Uh -huh. They go into Booth's files and. <laughs> Oh god. They, they they're encrypted, so they have to have a password. Yeah. And his creepy password is I heart April. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they uh find out that the senator's campaign is being paid for with Mexican drug money. Uh -huh. Not a surprise. And they have enough evidence to take everyone down. Torres wants the senator to build border wall that he has control of yes um i think we go into that a little bit later but yeah. rivera is drunk and machete puts her in bed and lays down with her per her request yeah and okay so at first you're like oh man machete dude that's not consent so no that's consent <laughs> Oh, you totally said that wrong. Yeah, you I'm said, like, it. fuck no, my no. pig or something. Well, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't raised to speak Spanish. I was raised <laughs> around Spanish. But anyway, uh, but as we find out later, Machete is a true gentleman. So, the, you know, all worries aside. Um, <laughs> also, that border wall thing. That was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke in this movie. It was a joke in real life in 10, 000, or 2010. <laughs> That was always a joke until 2016. Da, da, da. Oh, racists and anti-immigration people were always wanting to build a wall to block <laughs> us from the dangers of the Mexican immigrants. But it was never a serious thing until Dick LaOrange took over. So Luce is locking up her storage thing and Vaughn is there. Ooh. He says he knows she's in the network and shoots her in the eye. Oh, oh, when you watched this for the first time, when you <laughs> saw this part, you're like, no. <laughs> I was like, Luce is dead. <laughs> you're upset. No. <laughs> uh, Osiris and his men are at the church and Padre sees him on the save surveillance system. And he goes and gets his gun and starts offering, uh, offering, offering. Offing Osiris's men. And um, two shotguns he is wielding on the scene. <laughs> right. And I don't think Cheech Marin has ever looked this badass before. <laughs> right. He is fucking people up. I agree. The part where he's like, God forgives people. I don't. <laughs> he shoot, <laughs> blows that dude's brains out. But Osiris comes in and shoots Padre in the oh. knee, and then Booth walks in. No, oh, I fucking hate it. Uh, anyway, so we are no stranger to the badass that plays Osiris here. In fact, you could probably create a bingo game on this show and have Lee brings up Tom Savini as a square. <laughs> <laughs> a drinking game? Oh, yeah, that'd be better. We should have a drinking game. We should make oh, that's an official. Dangerous. That's dangerous. I know. Y'all would be fucking alcohol poisoning if we made one. <laughs> I can't keep up with them. <laughs> but, oh, uh, of course, another legend of the film. Of, oh, I'm sorry. Of course, another legend of films. Tom Savini is here. And it actually, I, I believe this marks the first time he isn't killed off in a Rodriguez movie. Uh, well, sort of. I'll kind of explain that in a bit. <laughs> also, if you caught the address of this church earlier when Booth gives it to Osiris, that's uh, the actual address of Robert Rodriguez's Troubled Maker Studios. So, you know, because it's, it's based in Texas. Oh, I did not know that. Nope. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so Booth has Padre tied to a cross. He wants to know where Machete is. Uh -huh. And when he won't talk, Osiris starts to nail him to the cross. Booth and Torres want the border built so they can be the only ones to run drugs across. That's what they're telling yeah. Padre. And then Booth nails Padre, uh, Padre's other hand. Yeah. Uh, 
more about this border wall is what they go into or whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a lot of exposition. <laughs> yes. But um, how are how are you uh, feeling about Machete so far as you're watching this? I'm liking it. Yeah, I like a good it's, action movie. I remember, even though some places are over the top, but oh, I was supposed to. Right. But um, like uh, I know a lot of people that I uh, that didn't like this movie that I talked to, and it's fine. Like we say on the show, it's it's okay to like a movie. It's okay to just you know love a movie, like what you like, hate what you hate. Right. But um, I know a lot of people who dislike this movie. It was the plot, like because the plot is everywhere oh yeah like, it's all over the place because like like i said there's like six main bad guys in this <laughs> movie you don't just have one villain but what's really funny what i find hilarious is all the the villains are fucking each other over this entire movie oh for sure but but the mexicans the allies and stuff they're fucking connected they're good <laughs> they're straight yes. because everybody's trying Oh, the bad guys are all trying to make money. Yeah. And make a profit off of everything. Yeah. So Rivera wakes up cuddling Machete and freaks out thinking that they may have had sex. Yeah. But she's pleased when she realizes that they didn't. Because Machete knows consent. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be a lesson to all of you. By the way, there is a whole deleted portion of this movie where Sartana has a twin sister. And yeah, I said that correctly. She has a twin sister who is also played by Jessica Alba. <laughs> um, Weird. There's even a death scene where Sartana finds her sister has been killed mistakenly by the henchman looking for her. It's all very unnecessary to the movie, <laughs> and I get why Ravi Rodriguez cut it, but you can see these deleted scenes, and there are a ton of them on the Machete Blu-ray. And I mean a ton. There are subplots, and even a scene where they actually capture Osiris and behead him with a in the chop shop we see later on with a circular saw. Oh. Yeah, it's nice. nice. That's what I meant by... Uh, Sort of doesn't die in a Rodriguez <laughs> movie. We just don't see it. <laughs> right. Machete wakes up when he hears something and they start both start killing people that are coming into the house. Uh -huh. it, it, even somebody with a fucking, what are they called? Uh, a Lucha Libra mask. Um, but what did you call it? A before? luchador? It, a luchador mask. Yeah. Uh, a Lucha Libre is actually um, uh, a form of Mexican wrestling. Uh, and the luchador ha has to always wear his mask. And traditionally, they come from a long line of uh, luchadors, you know, a family. Right. Families are usually what are involved in this. And it started out, um, a lucha libre uh, was actually um, like the Mexican form of backyard wrestling. Like it was mostly like underground stuff. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that. And they have to wear their mask because it's it's a shame to take it off and stuff. And you shame your family that way. And so you oh, hide dang. your face constantly. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with Machete. but <laughs> It was funny <laughs> it's that fun. he came in that it's fun like times. That. So Machete realizes that his brother might have gotten killed too. So he goes to the church and finds him hanging on the cross. He tells Rivera that he's going to take... He's going to take out the trash. She then looks around and sees the camera. So she's getting an idea. Yeah, yeah. And Machete had to text Booth saying that he fucked with the wrong Mexican. That's how you know Machete is truly pissed off. Because as we heard earlier in the film, Machete don't text. <laughs> Well, he just texted. <laughs> and you fucked with the wrong Mexican needs to be a shirt, right? That has to be a t-shirt somewhere. <laughs> It might be. That'd be a great shirt. I don't know. I love that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but if you wore it, you could oh, be up. Yeah. Yeah, because someone who looks like me has to explain how. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> right. So Torres calls Booth and says that it, that he's in town and he's going to kill Machete and then him. Yeah. And Booth tells him about Rivera and how she might be really dangerous for them. So Torres wants her to. Da, da, da. The security team at Booth's house is talking shit, even though they got their fucking asses kicked I by love, a weed eater and these a two pickaxe. These two security guards are fucking. <laughs> <laughs> They're so dumb. Yeah. And Machete is back. <laughs> he has a nail gun this t time and a weed eater uh, with blades. Yes. Like he built this. Yes, it's a death weed eater. <laughs> it's a death eater. 
<laughs> and one of the dudes just looks at him and he said, I quit. Because <laughs> he just doesn't want to die. Oh, no, no. Um, Machete has shears and he threatens another guy. And that dude gives him the GPS that says where Booth is. And Machete let him live. Yeah, which is, you know, Machete knows mercy. Right. Um, honestly, if someone came, you know, up to me with what he has here, which is a weed eater <laughs> with blades attached to it, I'm 100% sure this motherfucker's going to murder me, so it's understandable to cut and run in this situation. If you were at work, you'd just be like, I quit. Yeah, uh, I'm done. <laughs> right. Uh, the weapon here is another example of that exploitation factor I, I explained to you. You know, the, the yard and roofing equipment here are being used as a weapon. You know, basically a stereotype turned deadly. Right. So Rivera calls and is telling someone about the senator and they, they just don't believe her. It's like her boss or something. Yeah, yeah. She takes the evidence somewhere and drops it off because she says she's going to do what is right. The senator is getting ready to leave the hospital and Booth is there. Booth says that... Um, He's taking care of everything, and the senator does a press conference. A lady reporter, a lady reporter, calls him out, saying that he orchestrated the shooting, and <laughs> they start to play Booth killing Padre, and also the senator killing the people crossing the border. Dun, dun, dun. And Booth sneaks the senator out of the building. They get in a limo. And then the senator ends up shooting Booth. <laughs> uh, again, another double cross. <laughs> again, Robert De Niro is having the fucking time of his life playing this slimy politician. Uh, the best thing from all the interviews is all the cast, like I said, had a blast doing this film and loved working with Danny on his first lead role. In fact, Robert De Niro even congratulated him and said this was going to be the best thing for his career. And I think it was, but I need more Danny Trejo led movies because, you know, Trejo. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. I got to have more. I agree. So the senator steals a taxi and then Machete shows up and sees Booth is bleeding out. He's not dead yet. No, no. But Booth says that Torres is looking for him and wants to know where April and June are. And Machete says, with God. <laughs> well, technically, he's right. Right. And at the church, April and June wake up and call Booth. And someone answers and says that he's dead. Mm -hmm. Then Vaughn gets a call from the senator and he wants to kill Machete himself. There's so many things. <laughs> uh, like I said, I think this is probably, even though, you know, we were like, this is going to be easy. I thought it in my mind, but I feel like you had such a hard time doing notes on this movie. That's because there's something happening every fucking second. And that's the entertaining factor of these types of oh, movies. Oh, yeah. Is that there's something always going on. So you're always either laughing, uh, kind of shocked by the violence or just having a good time you know it's right. there's always something there for you to but latch there's onto. no there's no long pauses no there's lots of dialogue there's lots of action there's always something is this how your brain works yes movies like this are perfect to me because like there's something happening constantly so i don't get sidetracked but like it's also sidetracking me <laughs> like, it's taking me <laughs> in all sorts of areas and i'm just seeing all sorts of things and i love it because your brain, I feel like, is always zooming because you're ADHD or something. Yeah, shit. yeah, I have problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not necessarily, but... <laughs> so Machete goes looking for Luce, and they tell him that she's dead. And the punk kids <laughs> want to help him and take him... They take him to a chop shop to build whatever he needs. And that, and that chop shop... Is named the Machete Chop Shop. If you look closely, <laughs> uh, now the t the two kids here, uh, played by Daryl Sabara, and uh, of course, mostly he's mostly known for his role in Spy Kids. He was uh, the the one of the main characters. Well, right. he's one of the Spy Kids, <laughs> but also he pops up in things from time to time, like uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Eli Roth's The Green Inferno, which I I know everybody hates that movie. I love that movie. Now Jonah Hill was almost cast in this role. Which, oh my god. Honestly, I'm glad he wasn't. I, I love Jonah Hill, but I think the comedy mm -hmm. would have been way too over the top at that point. I don't need it's no, no. And plus, we we already got enough. 
<laughs> we already got enough people to latch onto. We're good. <laughs> um, now you notice Sabara has a buddy. That's always with him, usually carrying a notebook. And this this character doesn't speak a word and always has this notebook and pencil. Right. Um, that's actually the real life son of Danny Trejo, uh, Gilbert Trejo. Now, now Gilbert is also getting into the film business lately uh, with directing. In fact, uh, he has a new movie coming out soon called uh, From a Son where Danny Trejo plays a concerned father on the search for his drug addicted son. And it sounds actually like a very powerful movie and I'm very That's excited awesome. for it. Yeah. I, awesome. I really want to see this movie. So Rivera goes to find machete, but no one wants to talk to her. She jumps on the car and gets them to listen to her and they're going to help machete. Dun, dun, dun. Then Torres comes to talk to her. Uh, the network calls everyone and the punk kids, I keep calling them that, they're just teenagers, <laughs> uh, th they go to get Machete and tell him it's time to go to the armory and get ready for war with the vigilantes. And can I pause the show for a moment? And discuss how much I love lowriders low because lowriders oh, yeah, are so cool. <laughs> that's their rides into battle. <laughs> it's the lowriders. Lowriders. It's a whole world in itself where you take a car and pimp it out into the most lavish ride you could possibly imagine. And then the hydraulics, they, those make it so much more fun. If you've never ridden in a low rider or been involved in low rider culture, or at least, you know, been a spectator, it's probably the most fun you can have with cars. You know, uh, you meet these grease monkeys and muscle heads and stuff. They're, they're concerned with speed. Right. Lowriders are concerned with style. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. It's style all the way, man. And uh, it started in Los Angeles, post-World War II, uh, just kind of living lavishly and stuff and celebrating. And, and started when Mexican-American youth uh, cut frames, dropped suspensions, and really made cars into an art form. Mm -hmm. It's become a sign of Latino or, or Chicano pride. And I use the word Chicano kind of hesitantly because some people may found it offensive. So I apologize if you do, but I do know individuals who are proud of that word. And um, – who also took me on a ride in a chopped out low rider. <laughs> I had the time of my fucking life with a bottle of tequila, Molotov blaring on the best custom car stereo you ever heard. Oh yeah. Neon lights, weed and good times. <laughs> and I got to tell you, you haven't lived. <laughs> you haven't lived. Well, so uh, working at the audio shop, uh, -huh. uh there were some low riders that were, that would come in they would put stereos in them and stuff and put lights in them and yeah, stuff. Yeah. That was really fun. Um, but one of the guys that worked there, he had a low rider truck. Oh, those are even better. So those are great. You know, those like little trucks. Yeah. Yeah. He had one of those. I'll have to show you pictures. Cause I bet I can find some pictures of it. And it was so awesome. Oh, dude. He would come in and he'd have to lift it up because it would scrape if he didn't yeah. when he pulled mm -hmm. it into the garage, but he would pull it into the garage and he had one of the best stereos. And when people wanted to listen to a good quality stereo uh, to sell them on it, he would take them to his truck and everybody would be like, oh, this truck. It had a special oh. spot in the in the workspace so that people could go out there to his truck and listen to it. Because he, he custom built the box for it. Oh, yeah. And usually on all the low riders and stuff, those guys custom built Oh, everything, everything was custom built on it. Oh, it was, oh, it was sweet. Uh, yeah. But I, then the little motherfucker fucking sold it for a big yeet yeet truck. Is this dude white? Yeah. Ah, uh, sounds about right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but the low riders, oh, fuck. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, there was even a magazine, Lowrider Magazine. It went out uh, print a long time ago, though, sadly. <laughs> so the senator pulls up to see Vaughn and gets guns pointed at him. Uh -huh. Vaughn said that he paid the Mexicans to make fools out of them. So they put him in front of a camera, and they're going to make him say something on live broadcast. And you said they were going to kill him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're going to execute him live, but they're going to have him, like, recite this thing they wrote, which basically is just him, like, saying how much of a traitor he is and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. 
Um, because the whole time he's he's trying to play both groups, the Mexicans and uh, these border boys, uh, the good old boys, as he calls right. them later on. But he's playing both of them. Well, these guys find out. And so they're like, he's working with the Mexicans and they, you know, they're racist fuckwads. So they're right. like, he's a traitor. Right. Shit like that. But Machete and the network roll up, and as the senator is about to be taken out, firing squad style on TV, uh, Machete launches a missile, a missile, a missile out of his car, and everyone stops. Finally, everyone starts fighting. <laughs> um, Machete has a sh- huge machete, and it is fucking people up like this. Normal. Machete is a fucking Conan the Barbarian sword. He pulls oh, yes. out. It is as tall as him, right? <laughs> so everybody's like killing everybody. Uh, yeah, and- by the way, uh, did you see the taco cart? <laughs> they roll in with the machine gun. No. <laughs> oh yes, yes, I did oh, see that. Fuck. Uh, the doctor from the Mexican hospital shows up. And Luce is in the back of the ambulance, looking like a whole ass whooping ass bitch. Oh, uh, oh. yeah. And there's a slow, slow mo intro to uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Michelle fucking Rodriguez is in this movie. If we haven't made it clear, oh. no relation to Robert, but Michelle. I'm sure everyone knows her from her roles in the Fast and Furious franchise, of uh, course. Of course. Um, but I first saw her in the film Resident Evil. You know, she plays a side character in that movie and then a movie called Blue Crush, which I don't even remember what the fuck that movie is about. But I remember each and every scene Michelle Rodriguez was in. Well, I mean, Michelle Rodriguez. So. She made an impression on me. I'm just going to say. <laughs> so Machete's about to get killed and Luce blows all those motherfuckers away. Yes. They ram a truck into um the building and asked the senator who he's going to side with and he agrees to side with the mexicans so they go all uh, the they all go out and start shooting everyone machete has a motorcycle with a fucking machine gun yes, on it he takes the machine gun off the taco cart and puts it <laughs> on the motorcycle and does some fucking over the top shit he flies through the fucking air on a motorcycle shooting motherfuckers with this <laughs> right. gun <laughs> Oh, it's over the top, but it's delicious. totally needed. It is so good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, again, is it just me or, or is Robert De Niro having the most fun? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He comes out dressed in this like cowboy hat and like jeans. Because they people. dress him up. Yeah. So yeah. he looks like one of them. Yeah. Um, and you know, but I love how slimy this villain is. You know that, that how he's really just out for himself, and he doesn't care about anyone. Oh shit! Remind you of someone? Oh yeah. Fuck! I told you, Robert Rodriguez can tell the future. Oh I yeah. Think, I, I, I think, think so. this movie has showed me that man can tell the future, and we probably need to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So April shows up, and. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I not write this? April shows up, but she's dressed as a nun. Yes. Um, she hits the senator with her car, uh, shoots him, and then Vaughn hops in his car to leave, and Luce is in the back of it and kills him like a badass she is. I know. I want her to part. shoot me with a gun. Oh, um, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, that got weird. <laughs> Uh, April grabs a gun and just starts fucking shooting everywhere, not even paying fuck attention. And everyone her around just stops shooting because she's being fucking crazy. Yeah, because a nun walked onto the field and <laughs> shot above everyone's head. And so they're like, okay, never mind. <laughs> right. This is a sign from God. <laughs> so uh, Lindsay Lohan comes plowing in dressed as a sexy nun. And again, the audience I was with cheered, <laughs> which was nice. Because at the time, everyone had a weird hate for Lindsay Lohan, but not me for various reasons. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Torres is there, and he has Rivera tied up and has two really long swords. Machete has two machetes, <laughs> and they start to duel. I like a good sword fight. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's pretty good. <laughs> but Machete ends up stabbing Torres, and Torres just, like, gives the fuck up and, like, kills himself. Which was really weird because he's a little bitch. Anyway, (laughs) 
machete, in real life too. Right? Um, machete and everyone raise their weapons in the air as a salute. Which, by the way, you got to love Torres's line there about how he could go ahead and take Machete out because uh, this stab don't mean shit. <laughs> but he knows he's just going to be, <laughs> Machete's just going to be waiting in hell for him when he gets there. <laughs> so he just fucking kills yeah, himself. He, he, well, he commits a type of seppuku, I believe. Uh, but, <laughs> god damn. I know, I know. I love it. I love it. So the senator is actually uh, not dead. It's like dusk now, and all the dead guys are just laying in there, and everybody else is left. Yeah, yeah. But he's not dead. He had a bulletproof vest on the whole time. Dun, dun, dun. So he gets up, and he's running along the border uh, at dark now. Yeah. And he ends up getting killed by Vaughn's dude. Yeah, well, which is the best end for this character, to be pumped full of hot irony. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so the guy you see who pulls the trigger on the senator is Billy Blair. Now, now Billy Blair was mostly in and out of rock bands as a musician until the mid-90s when he started acting, mostly in low-budget affairs. And then on to movies like uh, this, uh, bigger blockbuster movies as a supporting role. Uh, what's really cool about Blair is he's actually related to Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, he's, he's a descendant. Which, if if you can find it, I, 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 this is one of the movies, if you can find it because it's kind of obscure, look for a film called Blood Sombrero. Uh, Billy Blair is in that one, and it's actually a pretty enjoyable little low-budget movie, I, at least to me. I, right. I enjoyed it. So the, he sucks kind of a sub-character here until this scene. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's still kind of a sub-character. But, so I never mentioned him, but he throws up <laughs> any time, time someone, someone dies. dies. And he even gets a little choked up here when he has to shoot yeah, the senator. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> right, which is a little funny to me. Yeah, yeah. They're they're all throughout, and you know, just like a lot of our movies, we don't get the. Be We're not going to sit here and like cover every single beat of it. Right. There are so many little gags in this. Oh, movie. so many, so much to see. It's it is just a smorgasbord of stuff. Oh yeah, it's there's a lot so of good. stuff in this. It's movie. Jam packed. And that's why we've been doing this for yes. like two hours. Oh, shit. I already warned the listeners that this was- a, Oh, you did? This somehow became a jam-packed episode. <laughs> right. So, you know, enjoy. Right. Um, actually, I had more pages of notes on this movie than The Shining. Yeah. I, I sat and compressed this down as much as I could because The Shining episode ended up being three hours. And I was like, okay, three hours for Machete is a bit excessive. <laughs> so, but there's so much. There's so much in this movie. So- did you, did you compress my notes? Yes. Did you though? Here and there. Okay, because I, I compress I'm, your notes all the time, but you never notice. It's just I'm just reading. It's just my magic that I do. Oh, not at all. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so Machete is riding his motorcycle when he gets pulled over, but it's just Rivera. Yeah. Uh, she says she got him all of his papers, and he says he doesn't want them. She straddles him on his bike and she wants to go with him and they ride off and I was about to say into the sunset it's dark. but it's dark <laughs> my bad they ride off into the night off to have sex um because machete gets the girl dude she's um, like so she's what is it? she straddles him she's like facing him and they just, that's not safe no, okay no. that's just not safe no that's not good road safety machete no um anyway uh, and we get informed at the end here that Machete will return in Machete Kills. Right. Which he did. <laughs> Machete <laughs> Kills premiered in 2013, and people weren't as into that one as they are this one, but I fucking loved it, and the crowd I was with loved it. And uh, we definitely will cover it on the show at some point, obviously. Now, <laughs> now, as I said, surprisingly, this movie did great. It opened at number three and was up above... Or, I'm sorry, it was up on the top grossing movies list of 2010, alongside Toy Story and just under uh, George Clooney's The American. <laughs> wow. This wow. did great. A a pretty fucking badass for Danny Trejo's first lead role. It was called one of the most enjoyable films of that year uh, from a few critics, and I agree. <laughs> Uh, with a budget about ten million, Machete grossed forty four million. So yeah, Machete was a fucking hit. Right. Um, and the sequel came. Uh, there was supposed to be a third one, but eh, I don't know if that's going to shape out after the way the sequel did. But enough of me and my thoughts. 
what did you think about 2010's Machete? And, and how do you feel about movies like this? Are you excited to go back into the past and kind of view what Machete was influenced by? I'm not going to lie. The first time I tried to watch this, uh-huh. I was not interested. I was just not in the right mindset, really, yeah, to be watching that. this I get that. kind of movie. So I was like, man, I don't like it. Yeah. But I started doing my notes and I'm like, fuck. I'm like 20 minutes in and I'm like, I fucking love this shit. <laughs> I love a good action movie. I love good killings, beheadings, all of that shit. You know I love that shit. Yes. I don't really care for the way over the top stuff, like the intestines and shit like that. We don't yeah, I love that. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I love all the other stuff. So I really love this movie. There's a lot of pretty people. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of backstabbing. Literally, I could never mind. Never mind. You got to jerk off the machete. Shh. <laughs> that, how did you know I was going to say that? Because I know you. We're married. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> machete, anymore. machete. It, like I said, it's a smorgasbord of good time. I mean, it's it's great. It's been called one of Robert Rodriguez's best film. And I kind of agree, even though I love all of Robert Rodriguez's films. Maybe not so much the Spy Kids series, but, you know, that's for a different audience. Right. They're good on their own. Right. But, so, like I've been hinting at, <laughs> we're going to turn to the IMDb review boards and go into what's, what a few people uh, d- decided they thought of a machete. Just just a couple <laughs> people here. Now, this first review comes from Patrick Baviar, uh, and this was the 5th of September, 2010. So uh, Patrick had just seen the movie. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here we go. All right. He starts out with a one out of 10 star, first of all. Disturbing film. This movie is absolutely disgusting. Sure, it has some flashy special effects, and there's a lot of gore, but it depicts our politicians as complete crooks and evil bad guys and an illegal <laughs> and illegal day labor as the protagonist. Man, your review has not aged very well, <laughs> Patrick. Um, I was just so offended by this movie, especially the part where the priest, priest is in capitals, <laughs> kills people. I recommend avoiding this altogether if you're American or Christian and have any moral decency or patriotism. I just cannot believe Holly. <laughs> Sorry, I just cannot believe Hollywood would produce a piece of trash like this. It's astounding. Oh, my gosh. Oh, fuck. It's so good. Okay, thank you, Patrick. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. Okay, so next, another one out of ten star rating. (laughs) Surprise, surprise. And this comes from Haddonfield Jason. Nice. Nice. Uh, 5th of September, 2010. So uh, Haddonville Jason had also seen the movie. (laughs) Machete is a film that clearly hates America. (laughs) Director Robert Rodriguez wants to make the Mexicans stand up and be violent to God-fearing white people. Damn, Haddonville. (laughs) You're already off to a bad start. I don't know that those people were God-fearing. Uh... How are flag-carrying, God-fearing, freedom-loving heroes like Governor Jan Brewer and Sheriff Joe Aparo supposed to do their jobs when films like Machete plagues the cinemas? Plagues it. Plague. A pox upon our house. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, hang on. Haddonfield Jason is about to invoke the Lord Jesus Christ in his review, so uh, buckle up, everybody. The good Lord Jesus Christ speaks through Jan Brewer, and El Diablo speaks through Machete. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, okay, but I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to maintain. <clears throat> I say in order to protect freedom, we burn every copy of Machete. The film is not without its merit, however. Oh, he has some good things to what? say. <laughs> I must admit, I really enjoyed the character of John McLaughlin. I would vote for him in a second. He is a handsome Texan played by Robert De Niro. He's a trumpet. He's definitely a trumpet. I do hope that uh, Haddonville Jason is telling a joke, you know, because that that is way too funny. But at the same time, Haddonville Jason rated very highly American Sniper from 2014. (laughs) In fact, he says, if you don't like American Sniper, then get out. (laughs) What is he, just a movie reviewer or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 and if you needed to know, 
that uh, Haddonfield Jason is a complete idiot. He 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 said Van Helsing from 2004 was a kick-ass summer popcorn fun movie. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so that's that's just two of the reviews I had to read that I stumbled across that I had to share with the listeners. Um, <laughs> wow. But, you know, Machete might not go down as cinematic masterpiece, but <laughs> it is just the funnest film. Oh, yeah. You, you'll have so much fun with this movie. But I also understand, you know, if you didn't care for it, it's not your bag. You know, that's fine. Uh, I just thought we'd step out. Of the boundaries, you know, of the horror genre, just kind of kind of play around in another genre and stuff like that, which is action. And we did that with Escape from New York. You know, we change it up on the show every now and then. But that's Machete from 2010. Uh, next week, man, uh, we're, we're going back to vampires, even though we just did from Dusk Dawn <laughs> last week. <laughs> next week, we're going back to vampires with Joel Schumacher's. The Lost Boys. That's right. We're gonna visit the Lost Boys. We got uh we got some sweet fucking uh Keith or Sutherland in there. Uh we got fucking uh oh we got some fucking Corey Feldman up in the shit with the Frog Brothers. <laughs> hey, you're gonna I I really hope you love this movie. Have you seen The Lost Boys? I haven't seen anything. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> We've been doing this for like eight something episodes. Like uh, <laughs> stop fucking asking me if I've seen shit. We're gonna we're gonna have some sweet saxophone playing and you'll figure out that when you watch the movie <laughs> but until next time oh my god um, I feel like machete don't end <laughs> <laughs> until next time I'm Lee Evans saying stay spooky and I'm Brittany stay horrific and machete will return <laughs> in machete kills okay I really should have been a grindhouse announcer anyway bye bye <laughs> Thanks for listening. To get a hold of us and submit your stories, fan mail, and death threats, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and nightofthehorrorfile.com. Our theme song was written and performed by John Brennan. Used with permission. Find John at shopjb.bandcamp.com and at badtechno.com. If you like what you hear, leave a good review wherever you listen to podcasts and share the show on your social media. See you next week.